Special report with Maxi Pad. Crisis in the Middle East. This is Maxi Pads reporting live from the Middle East crisis in Jerusalem, Israel. Yes, Jisrael, the land of the Holy Bible, the Holy Torah, and the Holy of Holiest, the, uh, the Quran, the Holy Quran. The Middle East crisis has exploded. And now we're going to find out why. We're going into the caves of al Gaida, which the Palestinians believe belongs to them. And the Israelis believe that it belongs to them. So uh, the battle all night long, and everyone seems to have left, but there may be some members of, of a possible Al-Qaeda division called the Al-Qaeda. Uh, Al-Qaeda, I'm not sure, but it sounds like Al-Qaeda. So. This cave's called the Al Qaeda Cave. It's really, it's really fascinating. It's about a thousand years old, and it's just uh, unbelievable architectural. Uh, the planes are flying over. The planes are flying over. Hopefully, they're not going to drop any. I don't. I don't. I don't believe. I believe he's just flying by. It's an American fighter jet. Yes, they've been seen all over. The Israelis and the Egyptians are all flying around. All right, right through here. So the Palestinians believe that, that a thousand years ago that their people were in this cave for about two weeks and they were hiding here and, uh, because they were being chased down by uh, some people that didn't like them at the time a thousand years ago. Uh, right. Oh my God. The this, this cave is in fact splitting up. As many of these caves do, they split up into different, different areas. They go into different zones. And if you go down the wrong one, you definitely can get lost and not be found. And that's why the Al-Qaeda may be here trying to hide, trying to spring up with the Palestinians and, in fact, uh, do a counter-terrorist attack against the state of Israel. So that's why we're here. And you can see... You can see the smaller arteries. Can you pick that up, uh, Jerry? You're picking up the smaller arteries that go through here? Yeah. Last night's fighting, all that we found in remains from any of this, besides the smoke and the cigarette butts, is this pair of Hanes underwear, which apparently belonged to one of the Palestinian revelers, uh, rebellion uh, type people. And so it's obvious they're heavily equipped, they've got decent underwear, and uh, they're able to, they're, they're obviously resources are coming into them. And they're not just uh, going around with not without any underwear. So um, this is also one of the caves. Entries to one of the caves over here. You wouldn't think a human being could fit through such a small orifice, but in fact, Palestinian Al Qaeda division members have been known to crawl in here, like their Afghani brethren, the Al Qaeda of Afghanistan. So this could very well be where Osama bin Laden is hiding. So, go into that cave and find out with me. Let's go. Watch out for the cow dung. Watch out for the cow dung. Watch your head, Jerry. Watch your head. I'm going. Oh my God! I'm not going in there. I'm not going in. I don't feel right. I don't feel right about it. I'm not going in. Special report with Maxi Pad, crisis in the Middle East. Maxi Pad, to uncover a story about Afghani hash, but what I have discovered is a story completely different. When I came to Israel, I only knew about the Israeli settlements from books and magazines. Now that I've seen them for myself, I see that they're very residential. And the other thing I'm seeing, which is a little bit more troubling, is the scorched earth left behind by the scarring of the attacks that will always live in the memory and infamy of all didactic people that have ever come before. So, without further ado, I will be taking us into the cave of al Khaid. al Khaid. Rocks are still tumbling from the cliffs of the al Qaeda mountains. 
This is Max E. Pad reporting from the Al Qaeda Mountains of Jerusalem, where, as you can see, I'm on the outside of a cave. This cave, we found out earlier today, a phone call was traced from Arafat to this cave. And the implications are that, in fact, this call was an important phone call placed to Osama bin Laden himself. Now, these are unsubstantiated reports, but we have no reason not to believe that Osama bin Laden may be in this cave. I'm going in. Jerry, follow me. These caves were over thousands of years old. They were first discovered by King David and King Solomon also. Absolutely impeccable artwork. I don't know if we can pick any of this up, but the, some of the carvings are amazing. Uh, Jerry, Jerry, this way. As you can see, there's, there's, there's some remnants of possibly uh, Osama bin Laden is a Coke bottle. We know for a fact he likes to drink Coke. So he likes it ice cold. He drinks it with a straw. And it's very particular that it be frozen or partially frozen. And he's had men shot for not bringing him the right temperature of his Coca-Cola. And that's a fact. So that Coca-Cola bottle, the way it's positioned, the straw, it's definitely possible that that is Osama bin Laden's Coke bottle. Let's move on. We might find him up through here. <laughs> just like him not to show up. <laughs> yeah. It's like making an appointment with Osama Bin Laden is worse than making an appointment with uh, Mr. Shu. Mr. Shu won't show up either. All right. We've made it out of the cave. And apparently Osama Bin Laden was not in there. So I believe this is a re successful report. I'm throwing it back to you, Swami. Thank you and good luck. Special report with Maxi Pad. Crisis in the Middle East. Caves of Israel to the hills of Afghanistan. Where the fighting, I guarantee you, is still very thick and very furious. Make no mistake about it, while the rest of the world watches the Middle East, Afghanistan is still one of the hottest spots on this planet. I guarantee you, the planes are flying and the bombs are dropping constantly. Oh my god, I hope you know that. It's picked up scale in the last week while there's been distractions. Oh, see, there's been other things going on, and no one's still looking at Afghanistan. There's been an incredible thing. been a thousand years and it's bombing continues, and the Al Qaeda apparently is gaining strength. And so. I, I, I'm going to probably go back to Israel, where it's a little, uh, where the bombings are a little bit less frequent, and if you don't go outside, you might get bombed. And this is really quite. The American forces are fighting harder than ever, and and, and, and are trying to stem the outcome of forces that are gaining steam. This is Matt reporting live from Afghanistan, over and out, Swami Burrito. I'm going to climb my way. As well, that was mm -hmm. like me and that's my why communication wife. is important because you oh. can have completely separate interests, but it's how the two of you interact with each other. You want each other to grow, you know, separately, independently, right? And yet you come home together, you know, you, you meet in the middle. Um, it's when you don't communicate about what the you know what the right. problem is or what you really want. What do you really want? 
not what you know what do you well, think they're pro- willing to hear that you want that's well that's right. a problem with women they they won't come out directly and communicate women well, not all hint at things or <laughs> that's why you've only been you know how long you've been single 30 how many years yeah 30 well, some if, years if we yeah. look at it as that all women won't 20, communicate 27 years women generally communicate 27 years well they they communicate but then they don't. They, they use a lot of innuendo and they don't get to the point. A man likes to get to you're the point. You're talking about it. You're what right. It's the wrong woman. What is the meaning of this? You're right. You know, what, what is all this coming to? What is the point of this? Ask. And women don't. Well, Ask. I personally have never been an asker. I've always held things inside of me. And, um, so that's tough. It that's is. Tough for it, someone to get close. It's like when you let your facade down, mm-hmm. they let their facade down. You know, you meet, you meet someone and you say, look, you know, I'm I'm really this this uh, not so great person. You know, I I sometimes stink up the bathroom and and I you know I, I'll burp and you know I'm I'm like not real perfect. And I'm hoping you're like that. You know, are are you are you you know like that? You said on so, a show occasionally. So you know, you, you kind of get down to it you works. know, are you really imperfect? Because I am. Right. Oh yeah. You know, and and that's how that's how you have to come to it together. Yeah. Instead of. I'm, I'm, I'm just hoping in a relationship that like the ladies I've been with over the years I haven't been with a lot of ladies because I've always been shy personally I've never had much luck with women in my mm-hmm. life I was married once I feel lucky I married a, she was a very bright woman intelligent woman I'm talking about Janet of course and we had a very good son he's a very smart son he's, mm-hmm. he's, he's good in school and he's good about the wisdom of the world because you know there's different forms of intelligence. Mm-hmm, absolutely. Book learning and right. b- like with me, I feel like I'm very wise about the world and what it is. Book learning, I'm not, but yet I'm good. But when it came to relationship with women, I, I was in the dark. I just I had zero self confidence. That is so tough. And yet I'm so a very tough. I'm I'm a very successful person in life. A lot of everything that I've touched and went out to do, from minor things to major things, I've been successful with. Mm-hmm. I've been politically active in my life for 21 years, and I've been successful with that. Mm-hmm. I came in here 10 years to do a TV show, and it was an educational, and I've been successful with that. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to women, that I haven't been <laughs> successful with. <laughs> you know, you, where you put your energy, where you put your thoughts and your energy, grows and flourishes. Well, so if you don't put your energy into it, it doesn't grow and flourish. You know, I relate it to racing. I'm a very good driver. I'm not as good as Mr. Kindle to my left, but I'm a very aggressive, very knowledgeable. I understand the basics of it. But when it comes to women, I'm quite the opposite. I'm not aggressive at all. And women and want so aggressive men in that respect. And that's where I pull well, away. I just want a guy that's going to just ask him out to start with. Well, that's my fault. I don't ask women out. I'm so very shy. So the fear shy. of rejection has kept you from... Probably from because it's having seems someone like, close and, and loving. Yeah, it seems like in my life that I've been very lucky that all women want to do is hang out with me. I'm a fairly, I'm not like mm-hmm. famous, but yet in a way I am f- more yeah, famous than the average person. Mm-hmm. And a lot of women just want to hang out with me because I'm Richard Marcella and mm-hmm. I do these neat things and I know these people and I do all these awesome things. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to, and I've been unlucky, the people, that wa- the women that I wanted to be with, they'd push me away and reject but me. But you, you may go after, this is, this is one thing that's really fascinating about relationships, is if we're afraid to have one, we will create people in our lives that will either be really smothering or very rejecting. You know, the ones who are sweet and, you know, could really, we could really blend with, will avoid because that's too threatening. It's too threatening to our, our safety. Because if we let our heart out, it could get hurt. Mm-hmm. So we, you know, it, but w- when you have your heart hurt a few times, you start realizing it's okay. Is it okay? It's okay. Is it okay? Yeah, you, you, you recover. Well, I don't think so. I think I've gone beyond that point now. I'm very... So the, the pain has caused you to protect yourself. Um, I suffer. Old age helps you. <laughs> oh, old age helps you. Old age will uh, not necessarily. Uh, 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 and, and, yeah, well, there's a certain wisdom you pick up from living and having things happen. And to we you. also have our set ways of believing. Well, I, I had, you know, something. Since I was 15 years old, I knew that there was going to be two things in my life that I wasn't going to be successful with, and and that you weren't going to be that I was not going to be successful with. Mm-hmm. Like I say, men ask and, and money. Money doesn't bother me. Mm-hmm. 
I'm not a, I'm not, I, I'm not, I, everything I've being, needed, being everything I've needed with money I've had to have there. Mm -hmm. I've lived a simple life. I haven't asked a lot of life. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the things I wanted money for, it's been there. Okay, mm -hmm. but when it's come to women, I just knew that I would not be successful. How did, it, what made you think that? Well, I got rejected a couple of times. Well, we get these core beliefs. We get these core beliefs about what the way it's going to be, and then every time a situation comes by that could possibly go into that basket of that belief, we keep putting it in, keep putting it in, and and that basket it starts becoming a reality, whether it's accurate or not. Mm -hmm. So if you, you know, if you believe you're not going to be successful, yes, that's the way it's going to be. Well, that belief has been since I've been 15 years old. Well, that, that's interesting years that, old. that you talk about rejection there because mm -hmm. uh, um, I didn't ever find it, it much as uh, uh, rejection is in any of the women. It's just it's the trust. I guess trust is a magic word for most trust guys. Trust and rejection I, kind of fit in the same it area. It probably is. You just you don't you don't want to get shredded. You don't want to you know you don't want to lay all the marbles out and all the eggs out of your basket and have so somebody stomp around. So come back to roost oh, yeah. later in case let, something happens. Let me put happens. it in a, a better way. You can be in love with someone, but not give them your power. Okay. Not give them your soul. Okay, sure. You can be in love with them and still maintain who you are. When you can maintain who you are while being in love. You can make better decisions. Yes. And you're not going to, if they do something that you're not trusting about, you question it. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you say, you know, this doesn't fit, you know, this happened, this happened, this happened. So why do we have this? Right. You know, it's okay to call people on their stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, and if it doesn't work, you will know that fairly soon. You can pretty much get a sense by subtle behaviors whether someone is trustworthy. Mm -hmm. You know what really pisses me off? What? <laughs> Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a perk on our show. Okay. What, what pisses you off? That the man has to do all the work. He's got to but ask he the women out. No. Well, he, has to, he, he asks women out because women aren't used to doing it. But they're the doing last, it more now. The last, if you were, listen, if you were 20 years old right now, it wouldn't be quite so much that way. He, the, the last two women. Are asking now, if a out. woman asks a man for her telephone, for, uh, for, for a woman, number? that means that the odds are the woman is interested in possibly going to bed with this gentleman. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. with Richard, not with me. It's the opposite. Well, what, do they get your phone number for a specific purpose? Yeah, to get out of what they can. To either try to get on my TV shows I produce, which I produce several different mm -hmm. ones, well, why don't you just or just to, hang out, just to hang out with me mm -hmm. because I'm Richard Marcella. Mm -hmm. And if they can find, they just want to hang. See, women want, women have to have a man in life. And, and no, if there, not there's, true. well, most women <laughs> Richard. do. See, there's your core beliefs. Women don't have to have a man in life. I have my beliefs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. We have core beliefs. Okay, so you believe. That okay, women well, have to have no. A man. Now here's the fact that most women—it's it's, it's not set in stone. Mm -hmm. But most women feel that. How they about your women? Have... I actually want to talk more about you. Who me? Yeah. You. For you, it has been like what? Asking a woman it's been out. Hell. It's been hell. You ask them out. I'm my own worst enemy. Yeah. What do you do? What, how do you sabotage yourself? To start with, I don't ask women out. Well, that's, that's I avoid one. women. I don't talk to women. I don't touch women. Yeah. Now, that I'm my worst enemy. You got to be able to do those okay, things here. to meet women. Okay. Okay. We're touching. Okay. 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 I asked you out because I asked you to be on the show. Okay. <laughs> okay, at least we're just, this is a start. <laughs> you have to ask for what you want in your racing when you saw something you wanted to do. You, well, you signed I look at you got it and I approach it and I say, how can I get it to it? it? And I pursue it till I get it. And you it. pursue it till you get it. And I've been that way very yes. much in my life. Bob Kendall can answer that. I've done pretty good at getting things together for us, haven't mm -hmm. I? I don't know about relationships. Well, that's that. something different. You haven't apparently had the problem with it. But, but, some, but some people do and some don't. I, I do have a problem. Yeah. And um, I want it to change. I'd love to have a woman in my life. Mm -hmm. You know. Not necessarily, I'm not looking for marriage, but it'd be nice to have someone to talk to, to spend some time with, to be intimate with. And I really miss it. It, it hurts. It depresses you know, it, me. Yeah, I bet it does. I bet it does. It gets, it gets lonely. It's like, what is the value in life yes. if I don't have someone whose heart touches mine? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The, the person I'm with now we, is, is, uh, is like that. We have a lot of values, a lot of things that we do and, and enjoy together. Mm -hmm. And no one's ever really alone, you know. And, and the main thing is 
I, I just find that it's just a, a nice combination, and which it feels nice. It does feel nice, but as far as going all the way into a marriage thing and signing the paper and all that, I just I can't tell you why I wouldn't do that. I, exactly why I wouldn't. There's Does probably a hundred reasons. Does I don't she? want to. Is right, and I'm the opposite of you. I I was always confident, and I didn't. I didn't get women. I don't know how I'd get them. They just always. They were always there. You assumed they would like to be with you. He's assuming they don't. Yeah, I treat them. I, well, you I, I treat you them know. equal to me, and I res I try to respect them, give them respect, and I you know that's just the way I look at it now. I would say, maybe 20 years ago, I didn't do mm. that. I think what Richard might do, and you tell me if the, I'm accurate on this is that you might view women a little bit higher, even though you might talk n not that way, but they're something unattainable. So therefore, it, it, you know, that, that fear that you're just not going to match up. Exactly. Well, it, it's unattainable. For me, it's unattainable. Um, what was it? How what was do you mean unattainable? Unobtainable for me. Unobtainable. For, for, you know, for, for most guys, they can go out and meet women. And, and for me, it's quite the opposite because, because the I'm very shy. Two things. I always was very shy and I always felt I was very ugly. Ah. So between the two, I had two strikes against me. Well, you see my left eye, it droops, it's weak. Oh, my God. And because of that, I've had women that Rich. didn't want to, you know. Rich, uh, I can't believe you've gone through all this time with that belief. The things I don't, I, the things I could talk about, I don't want to talk about on screen it's, it's, mm -hmm. that, that yeah. hurts me. You know, I, I was watching, the average man has sex 58 times a year. I was watching some, and they said that. And yet I haven't had sex 58 times in 10 years, mm -hmm. you know? And it keeps, last time I was with a lady was, I'm, be, I'm laying it yeah, out, I yes. don't care. I'm being very honest, right. very open about this. Was, I was in Amsterdam, last time I was with a woman was three years ago and it was a hooker and if it wasn't for that, it had been seven years ago last time I got laid. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and it hurts me. And, and I keep getting more and more drawn away on my own worst enemy. So, I if can get on, I, fixed you I up. can get on television. If somebody fixed so you up in a date, can... if someone fixed you up in a date, yes. how would that be? How would it be? It would, would be, be okay? interesting because I've been watching these dating shows lately. Mm -hmm. The shipmates, great right. stuff. So and then if, the other one. If they fixed you up in a date, that would be the you would get the first part handled. You'd have a date. Yeah, yeah, that would. Then be Then you true. wouldn't take a look at. Do we have chemistry? No. Is she intelligent enough? Is she fun enough? You know, she looked good. You know, you'd, you'd look at all these things. And then you'd need to look at them with not a, a real critical eye, because what happens is when we've been single for so long, the, the critical eye comes up really quick, because it's a protection, mm -hmm. you know? Right. And it's not necessarily the eye. It's the this, the that, the, you know. She didn't go to the right schools. She didn't have the right parents. You know, obviously, that wouldn't be yours. but. It would be, some, you know, create something. And uh, so you, you just have to allow yourself to be open. I'm ready to be open. I am ready to be open. Okay. I'm a very open person. I'm very liberal-minded. I've experienced a lot of life, done a lot of things. And by God, in spite of Bob Kendall, I've had fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, you deserve love. My See, dog he's allowed Sandy. himself to have love. Yeah. You've been afraid of it because you've been afraid, I think, of what the pain it could cause, if it could be debilitating. I've never got that far. I've usually rarely got past the first date. Well, what about <laughs> your marriage? Three. How was your marriage? It, it was okay. I was very young. I learned a lot from it. I learned a lot about myself that I wasn't open, that I was very cold. I didn't... I, so much I didn't know and understand. Mm -hmm. I'm 56 years old now, even though I have not had, I've lived a lot of life. Mm -hmm. I've seen, I, I understand a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm very, I've got a lot of wisdom of life mm -hmm. and I understand. It's and just yeah. love that you're, you would like. Yeah, that's what's lacking in my life. I've got my dog Sandy. What? She loves me unconditionally. She's such a good doggy. I love her. Yes. <laughs> Dogs will help. <laughs> Dogs do help. They, they, you, you get a sense of love from that being, you know, you can hold them and you know they love you, you know, they're, but it's still not like a human. No, oh, no, yeah. of course. It's, 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 I, yeah, so, this, so. It's been a long time since I've even let's been. Let's create it. Let's create it. Well, I need to create something, but I, like I say, I'm my own worst enemy. I but need to, to and I don't do anything. The way we say it, you've, you've said it now, 
I'm my own, my own worst enemy. Right. Oh, yeah, that's what Let's he was change that and say to yourself, because we, we create what we say and think, mm -hmm. say to yourself, I have learned so much, I'm ready for love. I'm open. I am open. Perfect. See, here's That's the thing. I'm, I'm an open. asset to be. I'm an asset to have. I'm not that bad a person ever. I'm well, you're, you're a kid. You're, you're funny. Person. You're full of it. I mean, who wouldn't want to be around you? And you're adorable. So you just you haven't. I am so. It, it saddens me that you don't know that. You know, it really does. That I mean, we you know we're inside here. You know, we're not out there. But it's you know so. I'm more nervous now than when I did the bungee cord jump. <laughs> yeah. I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> What's riskier? <laughs> Ooh, hook one up. It could, be, it could be your life, you know, but it could be your life in, yeah. in bliss and happiness and, and uh, challenge. But here's the thing, like if you bungee cord jump, you die, you know it's part of it, and you say, hey, that's the way I went. I went out in a blaze of glory. <laughs> but that's what you, but you kind of go into a relationship like that, too. I'm going to do the best I can. Well, I have a belief so I'm going to be myself. I don't want to be a front. I don't want to be a facade. This is Richard. This is what you get. This is the way I am. Right. I, I, I like laughing. I do interesting things. It's fun. I have a lot of good people around me. Mm -hmm. Well, you've got a lot to offer. I don't have a lot of money in life. But I do have a lot of things that are going my way. I bought a house, mm -hmm. and I'm so happy. A year and a half ago. You have to have something to buy a house. Well, I bought a house, and it's the wisest thing in my, between the appreciation. Mm -hmm. Every day I wake up happy in that respect. Because you're feeling safe. You've got a, a place to put your feet. I, you know, it's Got to have a headquarters. Dream, yeah. mm -hmm. Okay, so, <clears throat> so there's a belief that if you don't have a certain level of income, that, that eliminates your value. Well, money isn't, you know, unfortunately in America, one of the main things is about your money and in your income. In the big cities, not in, not in America. Well, you go to the country, the it's not going right. to be like that. In the, the values in Los Angeles stink. But let me, I've got a minute, so let me just kind of okay. give, you, give okay. you a, a summary here. Okay. Um, and, now, and now I just lost it. <laughs> now I lost my summary. <laughs> if, if you're open, you can do it. If you're willing to risk and allow yourself to have your heart broken, mm -hmm. you can do it. You will live through it. Not everyone has the values of the equity system, you know, where it's looks for money, looks for money. You can find people, you know, you're not going to get a 20-year-old model, you know. They're going to go look for money because that's what their you know, value at that mm -hmm. level is. I wouldn't want a woman like that anyway. Right, okay. So, that's so, so you look at something, up. you know, a woman who's realistic and good, and you can, find, you can find a quality relationship that is loving, caring, and nurturing. And, and I would love to see you go do that. Me too. Will you do? I second okay. that. So let's, I let's, really let's second that. promise to do it. I'll do my best. Okay. Scott's on it. Thank you so much for being on my show. Thanks for watching. And... I will see you next time, maybe next week. Bye-bye. Thank you very much for your time.